What's up, math scholars and math haters? This is Mr. W. Today we're going to tackle question 16 in the 8th grade math questions that North Carolina released this past school year. The question shows us a square with a diagonal line, and it tells us that this angle is 2x plus 15 degrees, and that this angle is 6x minus 45 degrees, and we're just supposed to find the value of x. Now, in order to do a question like this, we're going to need to know some geometry about transversals and angles, and I'll go over what a transversal is and what all that means. We are also going to need to know what to do with an equation when we have a variable on both sides. There's a bit of a different strategy that we'll need there, but we'll figure it out and we'll make it through. Uh, to start with, this is actually the same kind of problem. It deals with the same idea as number 20, which has one of these diagrams. This probably looks a lot more familiar than this, but I'm actually going to do a quick bit of drawing and turn this problem into something similar to what you're more used to. So let's go ahead and keep this line going, keep this line going, keep this line going in both directions, and remind us that these two lines are parallel, and now this looks a lot more similar. We just have the other two sides of the square in the right angle boxes. But if we can see this as a problem with two parallel lines and a transversal, a line that cuts into both of them, then we can remind ourselves that, okay, Every time we see parallel lines in a transversal, it creates small angles, which are all congruent to each other, and big angles, which are all congruent to each other. We have two small angles, so these two angles are actually going to be congruent to each other, which means that if I'm going to take this geometry stuff and turn it into algebra language, I can actually set up the equation of 2x plus 15 equals 6x minus 45. And this is where we get to that part about what to do with an equation if we have a variable on both sides. So I will actually go ahead and zoom into this real quick because there is a trick that I like to use for this. I call it the Volnor trick. Essentially, we want to have a variable, to have our variables only on the left side and to have all of our numbers on the right side. So if I'm going to take this strategy and apply it to this problem, I'm going to start by getting all my variables on the left side. I see 6x on the right side, and that's the one I don't want. I'm going to remind myself that this is a positive 6x, and I'm going to do minus 6x. And whatever I do to the right side of the equation, I have to do to the left side. So that's minus 6x here as well. All right, so now positive 6x and negative 6x are going to cancel each other out, just like positive, or plus 15 and minus 15 will when I work with my numbers, but that's a bit of a spoiler. And now 2x minus 6x is the same thing as 2x plus negative 6x. And it's at this point that I'm going to remember my rules for integers, and I'm going to remind myself that 2 plus negative 6 is the same thing as 6 minus 2, which is 4, with the sign of the larger absolute value of our two numbers. Larger absolute value came from 6, and 6 had the negative sign. So that's going to end up being negative 4x. And now I'm going to move on to my numbers. And I want all my numbers on the right side. I see plus 15 on the left, and that's the one I don't want. So I'm going to subtract 15 to get rid of it. I will subtract 15 from here as well. Plus 15 and minus 15 cancel each other out. And now minus 45 and minus 15 is going to require us to use another rule of integers, which is where if, we already, if we're already negative and we're subtracting money, our answer will have us add 45 and 15 to get 60 and keep the negative sign. Now the idea here, um, think of it as though you owe someone $45 and then you borrow 15 more dollars from them. The amount that you owe is going to go up. So we add 45 and 15 to get the amount of money that you owe, and since that's still money that you owe, we put a negative sign on it. Now, at this point, I just want to go over what all we've done. We took all our variables and got them on the left side. We took all our numbers and got them on the right side. Um, we canceled out a number from the left and a variable from the right. So we started with two terms on each side and ended up with one term on each side. As Thanos would say, this is perfectly balanced, as all things should be. A very applicable statement to math. So now that I know that negative 4 times some number equals negative 60, now all I have to do 
is divide both sides by negative 4, because negative 4x is the same thing as negative 4 times x, and we divide to get rid of times because those are opposites. Negative 4 and negative 4 will cancel each other out, and I'm just left with x. And now negative 60 divided by negative 4. Negative 60 divided by negative 4. This gets me positive 15. So after all that, I get an answer of positive 15 for my variable. So I come down to my gridded response boxes. Every digit in 15 gets its own box. The one bubble under the one gets filled in and the five bubble under the five gets filled in as well.